capitalism that it must expand. A no-growth capitalism, as some of the more naive, uh, as some of our more naive ecologists have argued for, is a contradiction in terms. The reason you invest is to accumulate. And your accumulation of capital has no purpose or meaning unless you can mix it with labor to yet increase your wealth further. And of course, you use large sums of it for personal consumption and for political power and for control of your culture and for that wonderful, good, happy life that you so like. Now, that nature of expansion really affects the nature of, I mean, it's an important imperative because it means capitalism also can never stay home. It goes abroad. Uh, if you ever saw the film Controlling Interest, there's a corporate president who says, those corporations that stayed regional in New England years ago and decided not to go national, we can't even remember their names. They died. We had to go national. And those of us who are now national know we have to go international. We have to invest abroad. So one of the laws of capitalist motion and development is this inexorable expansion. And that means expansion into an expropriation of the third world. A process that's been going on for about 400 years, perpetrated by the Portuguese, the Spaniards, the Dutch, the Belgians, the French, the English, and most recently, most successfully, most impressively, by the Americans. That is the American, that is by the ruling classes of these countries, not by the ordinary people. The ordinary people simply paid the costs of empire. The ordinary people simply sent their sons off to die on the plains of India or in the jungles of um, the Congo or uh, in Latin America, wherever else. But that expropriation of the third world that's been going on for 400 years brings us to another revelation, namely that the third world is not poor. You don't go to poor countries to make money. There are very few poor countries in this world. Most countries are rich. The Philippines are rich. Brazil is rich. Mexico is rich. Chile is rich. Only the people are poor. But there's billions to be made there, to be carved out, to be taken. There's been billions for 400 years. The capitalist European and North American powers have carved out and taken the timber, the flax, the hemp, the cocoa, the rum, the tin, the copper, the iron, the rubber, the bauxite, the slaves, and the cheap labor. They have taken out of these countries. These countries are not underdeveloped, they're overexploited. Thank <laughs> you.